Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has quipped that he anticipates a fireworks display at German industrial giant Rheinmetall's new weapons manufacturing facility in Ukraine. The company announced on Saturday that one of its production plants in the country is already operational. Germany's largest arms maker finalized plans to establish a joint venture with the state-owned Ukro Baronprom Defense Group earlier this year to manufacture artillery ammunition, armored vehicles and air defense systems. As part of the partnership agreement, Rheinmetall, which produces a vast array of weapons including Leopard tanks, stated that it would build four factories on Ukrainian soil. Moscow responded to the announcement with a warning that such facilities are considered legitimate targets for Russian strikes. Rheinmetall's director, Amen Paperga, confirmed that things are progressing in Ukraine and the first plant is already ready. We have many good plans. The first plant is already operational, he said, during an interview with Ukrainian news channel TSN. The Ukrainian defense industry is our partner. Currently, we have a production facility and a maintenance facility. By the end of the year, we will have the first state-of-the-art Lynx infantry fighting vehicle in Ukraine. At the moment, we are serving infantry fighting vehicles as well as main battle tanks, he added, noting that the joint venture has proven productive. Medvedev, who currently serves as the deputy head of Russia's Security Council, commented on the development, implying that the newly built plant will be targeted by the Russian military. The German company Rheinmetall has launched the first of four military factories in Ukraine. As previously promised, we eagerly await a celebratory Russian fireworks display right at the production site. He said in a post on X and his Telegram channel accompanying the message with a short video of an explosion. Rheinmetall had previously stated that the Ukrainian conflict has significantly improved business performance and nearly doubled the company's operating profit in the first half of 2024. The company expects to receive orders exceeding $64.8 billion by the end of this year. Moscow has repeatedly denounced Western involvement in the conflict, arguing that efforts to support Kiev only benefit the military-industrial complex at the expense of EU and US taxpayers. Russia maintains that no amount of military aid to Ukraine will change the outcome of the conflict and will only prolong the fighting. Footage has been released, showing the first moments after the Israeli attack on the UAV production plant in Shamsabad, near Iran's Iraq city. The video footage shows fire in the UAV production plant. Iran has banned filming from the region. However, channels associated with the Iranian opposition published the video today. The destruction of the UAV production plant could seriously affect Iran's ability to supply kamikaze drones for Putin's army. The Israel Defense Forces attacked Iranian military sites, including air defense batteries and facilities involved in the production of ballistic missiles used in Iranian attacks on Israel on October 1st and April 14th. <laughs> Israel's attack paralyzed the production of ballistic missiles in Iran. The American portal Axios wrote about it. Israel's retaliatory strike against Iran disabled a critical component of Iran's ballistic missile development program, said the article with reference to three sources from Israel. It also says that Israel hit 12 planetary mixers that were used to produce solid rocket fuel for long-range ballistic missiles. According to the interlocutors of the portal, the affected objects are extremely complex equipment, which Iran does not produce, but orders abroad. The representative of the United States confirmed that the strike significantly weakened the missile potential of Iran. Restoration of production capacity may take no less than a year, since Iran is forced to buy such equipment in China, since it does not produce it on its own. 
In addition, limiting Iran's ability to produce new ballistic missiles will affect its support for allies such as Hezbollah and the Houthis. Israeli sources also reported that the attack hit four batteries of S-300 air defense systems that protected Tehran and its nuclear and energy facilities. The Iranian army in its statement confirmed that the attack took place from the airspace of Iraq and damaged several radar systems, but did not mention the loss of facilities engaged in the production of missiles or drones, emphasizing its right to respond. Israeli sources confirmed that the strikes were carried out from the airspace of Syria and Iraq, some of them near the border between Iraq and Iran. U.S. President Joe Biden noted that Israel's strikes were aimed only at military targets, and expressed the hope that this would put an end to the exchange of attacks between Israel and Iran. He also called to do everything possible to protect American troops and help Israel in case of possible retaliatory actions by Iran or its allies. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of Qatar called on all parties to refrain from further escalation. The day before it became known that Israel struck Iran. Before that, the Iranian authorities, preparing for the expected counterattack from Israel, ordered the armed forces of the country to be ready for war. The military was instructed to develop several plans to respond to the Israeli attack.